Hello, this is Craig, and I built most of the screens necessary to play this game, so I figured I'd give you a quick little demonstration of how it might be played, although there's too, still too many screens missing for it to actually be played. You're the governor of a small a colony, a new colony, although I don't have the screen that tells you that. You can select any of these uh, alien races as your starting race, and there are plenty to choose from, and they're all completely random. Each has specialties, in this case attack station, bomber bay, and shield capacitors. That is about uh, what their starting ship technologies are. We'll pick these uh, Waris goggle guys, the Warchai. Since we're mayor, it takes us over to the uh, star system we are mayor of, which in this case is really boring. It has five moderately habitable planets. This is the only one that is actually inhabited. Normally when you click here it would take you to the colony management screen, but there isn't one right now, so it doesn't. But we can go over to the Shipwrights Club, which is basically a bar that you can go to to get your uh, information. These are all members of your species, and you notice that they each have unique faces. The children serve as an in-game tutorial, and, uh, and in this case they're talking about the difference between a larger ship and a smaller ship, which uh, I'll, I'll mention later as well. But as you go further into the game, they talk about more advanced topics, and you can learn a lot by listening to them argue about it. Here's your quest broker. Normally, he'd take you over to a quest broker screen where you get to choose between the various missions, but I haven't built that because there's only one mission right now, and that is to build a ship for mapping the asteroid belt. It needs to have science and physics. The more, the faster the mission will go. A deep scanner would also be nice. Well, we have a deep scanner. What, would, what does it look like when we add it? Oh, we can't add it because you can't just dive deep into the uh, into the sets here. You have to start up here with the tax station. Then you can add the deep scanner. Now we still would like some physics. Do we have a physics lab? Here it is. In order to get the physics lab, we have to add in the ECCM module. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now this isn't a very efficient ship. It's got a tax station and an ECCM module in it, neither of which is of any use to us for mapping the asteroid belt. Um, ECCM, by the way, is electronic counter countermeasures and is good for making sure your missiles hit, um, which is kind of unfortunate because these guys don't actually have any missiles. Uh, they are not a very well-designed species, but we'll leave that for later. You can see that we have 16 physics and 4 science. That leaves us with a total of 20 applicable points on this mission. The mission actually requires 50, but we can accomplish it with this ship if we'd like, because this ship produces 20 every 6 hours. So all we would do is we'd come back after 12 or 18 hours and we'd check up and the mission would have completed while we weren't looking. That's because this game is largely intended to be a casual game. Or not necessarily casual, but uh, not not a, a sit down and play a continuously style of game. Uh, there are other things you can do besides launching missions, such as managing your colonies, uh, searching the galaxy for interesting things and new opportunities, and other such. Um, but the mission based system is the most powerful tool in your in your arsenal. Now, when I was talking about larger ships versus smaller ships, this is a sixteen thousand dollar ship, and it's got twenty science. We can add something that has nothing to do with science, like a bomber bay. And you notice that our science went up. That's because the ship size increased. So the larger the ship size, the larger the pieces of technology in it, even though you haven't bought more of them. We don't need to buy eight physics labs. We buy one physics lab technology, and as many physics labs as fit into the ship get put into the ship. So here we've built a ship. Ah, here we are. Here we've built a ship capable of doing the mission immediately. It has more than 50 physics and science. However, it costs $49,000, which is much more than it did before, and half of our available funds. So you'd have to weigh whether or not that it's worth that to you. Uh, you could send this, you could buy this ship and send it out on the mission, and make the excuse that, well, you're going to have a pretty good um, carrier available after after the fact. Uh, although actually it's not a pretty good carrier because it doesn't have any shields or armor, but we could you know we could build this to be a carrier as well as a science ship if we wanted to uh, something like this uh, and there we go. We now have a, a cool looking carrier. 
uh, this sort of, of management is fun and uh, hopefully will be enough to sustain much of the game. Uh, we would also be allowed to reuse a ship to go on this mission if we already had some or buy a civilian ship if that was uh, more effective for us. Normally we would launch the mission by clicking here but uh, don't have the mission system running yet so we didn't do that. Um, yep. That's basically what the game will probably be like, aside from the missing pieces that there are lots and lots of. Uh, I haven't shown you battles, I haven't shown you uh, building colonies, I haven't shown you any of that stuff, but uh, this should give you a basic idea.